to order, I'm going to ask the secretary to call the roll. OK, Governor Barnhill. Here. Governor Bizuido. Here. Governor Gaffney. Here on the telephone. OK, Governor Kelly. Here. Governor Kumar. Here. Governor Land. Here. Governor Stancato. Here. Governor Thompson. Here. The quorum is present. Thank you. I want to just uh, welcome everyone and particularly those uh, who are online um, since this is a virtual event. Um, appreciate everyone's presence. OK, moving on with the agenda. Uh, first is the approval of the consent agenda. I'd like uh, to ask for a motion that the Board of Governors approve the consent agenda as presented, which would be the approval of the official proceedings of October 1st, 2021 discontinuance of the nurse midwife graduate certificate program, the discontinuance of the nurse midwife specialty and doctor of nursing program, discontinuance of the nurse midwife specialty and master of science in nursing program, discontinuance of the behavior of science and education and learning design and technology, Revision of section 2.43.11.120 of the statute on university requirements over the baccalaureate degree. And then finally, the stadium structural repairs. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? So moved. So moved. Second. Okay, did, did you get that, Julie? I did. Okay, it's been uh, motioned and seconded. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed, nay. OK, the aye carries. Uh, next, the board will consider personnel recommendations presented by the administration for approval. Uh, Provost Cornblue has uh, submitted two recommendations, and I have uh, one to add myself. The first is for recommendations for tenure, promotion to full professor in administrative appointments. Is there a motion to approve? <laughs> I so move. And moved by Four. Governor Kelly and supported by Governor Land. Uh, any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the aye carries. And then the uh, um, the one from um, uh, Provost Cornblue is uh, this is the second one. It's for senior administrative appointment, and I'll ask. Uh, Provost Cornblue to describe the appointment, and then I'll read the action after he describes the uh, new appointment. Thank you. So the recommendation here is to create a new position of Vice President for Academic Student Affairs and Global Engagement. Um, I'm requesting to do this as a desire to bring together various office areas in the Provost Office that relate to academic student affairs. So everything from recruitment through admissions, financial aid, orientation, all areas of student success, tutoring, peer mentoring, internship, career counseling. In other words, from the first contact of students to graduation and on to their careers, then would, would come up together in this one area. So, so the goal is to break down silos and bring those areas in the provost's office together and equally important to link those areas with the colleges, schools and departments because uh, recruiting students and, and supporting them here is a joint effort between the central administration and the college schools and departments. Um, and the goal is much stronger faculty engagement in these key areas of academic student affairs. We want to be able to draw on faculty expertise and to mobilize faculty enthusiasm to support our students. Um, I want to emphasize that this is far from a radical idea. It is very common to have a vice president for student affairs or academic student affairs on the cabinet. So th this is um, this is not creating a new position. We are asking to I'm asking to appoint Ahmad Ezzedine in this role. He is currently associate vice president, so it is elevating his status, um, but it is not adding an additional administrative appointment. In fact, in the provost's office, we, we have shrunk the number of associate provosts. Um, Ahmad has a long history at Wayne State. All of you on the board know him as a collaborative, constructive leader who can bring together 
uh, um, and break down silos uh, across the campus. He has the confidence of our faculty and understands the importance of engaging faculty and academic leadership in all we do on the student side. Thank you, Provost. Uh, can I get a motion that the Board of Governors approve the appointment of Dr. Ahmad Ezzedine as Vice President for Academic Student Affairs and Global Engagement? The effective date of this five-year appointment is December 3rd, 2021. Motion. Support. Great. Motion by Governor Kumar and supported by Governor Stancato. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any um, uh, nays? The ice carry. Thank you very much. And the second is um, another personnel action that I want to bring before the board. Uh, as you know, our vice president and general counsel Lou Lessum has announced his plans to retire from the university officially next month. And given his accomplishments on behalf of the university during during his tenure as general counsel for the past 25 years, in his service to the university during the 33 years he has been with us, I'd like to recommend that the board take the following action. And the action is to, um, what I need is a motion that the Board of Governors approve the designation of Lou Lessum as Vice President and General Counsel Emeritus upon his retirement from the university. And let me just, before we uh, do the motion, let me just say a few words. Uh, about this. This is, um, you know, certainly something that we do for that's reserved for individuals who have dem demonstrated really significant and long lasting contributions to the institution. And as I've uh, mentioned, Lou's uh, served the senior leadership for the institution with, you know, really sage advice and wisdom, having worked with five university presidents and, and countless board members. Uh, for over 24 years. He's mentored at least three university attorneys who have served under him and moved on to become general counsel elsewhere. And I'm personally really grateful because he actually wanted to retire um, a couple of years ago, but uh, given the many uh, difficult issues we were dealing with, um, he, he um, uh, postponed his retirement and, uh, and continued to provide counsel uh, during a very difficult uh, time over the past couple of years with the pandemic. So the university has been extremely well served by his service, and I think that this um, action is, is well merit merited. And um, uh, with that, I entertain a motion um, for the board to approve the designation of Lou Lessum as Vice President and General Counsel Emeritus upon his I'd retirement. Like to, I'd like to make that motion, Mr. President. Okay, thank you. I'm moved by Governor Kelly and seconded by uh, Governor Land. Okay. All in favor? Oh, aye. Before, you, before you ask for a vote, uh, speak in support yes. of the motion in case we have yes. some. Yes, okay. Confusion. Any discussion, please? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Sorry, uh, Governor Kelly, you, you're absolutely right. I want to add my personal commendations to Lou Lessum. Uh, uh, as, a, as an attorney myself, and as you know, prior judge, I'm uh, keenly aware of the difficulty that this job involves, the legal difficulties. I think few people understand the awesome scope of the legal problems that are brought before the general counsel of this and other large universities. It requires an enormous amount of learning and legal ability. I've been so impressed while, uh, particularly when I've had a chance to observe his work at close to range, uh, Lou's wisdom in his legal evaluations and his applications of, the, of his wisdoms to his work. Um, and not over that, but the wit that he brings, uh, which I found delightful just today, for example, my colleagues may remember we were talking in an executive session about a particularly difficult case in which uh, we're told uh, we've been asked to rely on our opposition's uh, good faith. And Lou added that as it develops, uh, our opposition's good faith flows like concrete. <laughs> so that kind of thing just buoyed me up <laughs> over the, the time that I've worked with him. Uh, I think the job as counsel to the to the Board of Governors in particularly, has been uh, incredibly uh, 
complex and demanding. Uh, long before I got on this board, I'm aware that Lou had to deal with disputes between the, the board and the president. I know he's had to deal with disputes among board members. It's incredibly intricate and difficult to walk a line and give legal advice uh, to to his uh, to his board members as well as his administrators. Uh, so I believe that Wayne and the board is greatly in Lou Lessons' debt, and he has my personal praise and thank you. Any other discussion or comments before? I take the vote. All those in favor, please signify by aye. 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 Any nays? The ayes have it. Lou, congratulations. Uh, very well deserved. Thank you. I'm very grateful. OK. Um, I've got to look through my very wet notes here to see what I have not yet done. OK, next is the uh, president's report, so let's go straight to that. Um, as you know, earlier this week, the uh, latest uh, COVID data that we looked at on Monday triggered uh, implementation of uh, some interim steps to protect the campus. Um, at that time, the uh, seven day average was 16.1%, which uh, our trigger metric, this is for um, for the city, for Detroit, our trigger metric was anything over 15% um, would trigger a uh, um, uh, depopulation of the other campus. On Tuesday, that 16.1% was revised upward to 16.4%. Um, the good news is that uh, the latest one that I have, which is from um, uh, two days ago, would be, uh, the that seven day average has actually gone down in Detroit 12.6%. So that actually uh, would be in the heightened alert uh, category, but not um, trigger a depopulation. On the other hand, though, uh, um, oh, just one more um, um, metric is that uh, the number of cases had gone up to 308 per week. This is again in Detroit, which was up from the previous week of 264 uh, cases per week. And on campus, the uh, percent positivity had been rising for seven consecu consecutive days, as had the uh, number of new cases. Um, so the good news is that over the past uh, week, the uh, percent positivity for Detroit has has dropped, and there's some evidence that the number of cases um, is also dropping, or at least is not is not increasing. Uh, we'll see what the data shows for today, which I don't think I have yet. Um, but the bad news is that another one of our trigger metrics is uh, more than 15 uh, new cases over a three-day average of more than 15 new cases uh, per day. And um, as of uh, yesterday, uh, we were at about 26 or 27 new cases per day. So um, even though we're down in one of our trigger metrics, this is another one of our trigger metrics, which, um, which was the number of uh, three-day average of number of new cases per day. And the, uh, the trigger for depopulation was 15. And we're up to about 26, 27. We don't have an exact number right now because the um, the, the on-campus ones are both presumptive and uh, confirmed cases of COVID. And when test results come in, some of the presumptive uh, uh, gets converted uh, to you know negative tests. Uh, so yesterday it was 30 something. Now it's around 26, 27. So it'll probably uh, end up somewhere in the mid 20s, which is still considerably higher than the 15% that um, that we <clears throat> said was our our point at doing something. Um, we're going to continue to look at the data. Um, I think that the I, I can tell you that the um, uh, uniformly the response that we've received from both faculty and and students. 
uh, in terms of the interim measures that we've uh, taken have been uh, very supportive. Um, um, the one area where students particularly uh, have appealed to us is opening the um, fitness center, at least um, um, you know, with some maybe some additional precautions, but having it open and obviously, you know, particularly during the time of examinations and and more stress than usual uh, to be able to work out is, is something I can certainly you know identify with the students in terms of their want to do that and relieve some stress. Uh, we're going to take a look at, at the data on Sunday. We'll have the um, campus data for this week uh, all analyzed on Sunday. And uh, our hope is that if it follows the same pattern as um, as the uh, city uh, wide uh, data that uh, what we'll see is uh, a slight decrease. And if that's the case, um, we'll probably make some modifications on Monday uh, to allow access to the uh, fitness center so, so that our students can um, work away their, their, their stress during uh, the upcoming uh, finals that's coming up. Um, the main thing is, is we want to make sure that um, uh, we do whatever we can to end the uh, uh, semester off as safely, safely as possible uh, so that we can come back for the uh, next semester in January as, as healthy as possible. And um, uh, we're going to we want to be as as um, as I don't know, as active and as uh, uh, robust a campus as we can possibly have uh, beginning in, in January. So so hopefully uh, that'll be the case. Certainly one of the things that was uncertain on Monday, which is uh, we're beginning to get some more data about is the uh, the new variant, the Omicron um, uh, variant, which people feared was going to be uh, catastrophic. And I think um, um, it's probably uh, not going to be as bad as, as people once feared, although it's still very serious. I think the transmissibility of it is greater than the Delta. Uh, there's some uh, um, varying uh, data about whether it's more severe or more mild than the Delta. Um, and there's some you know, data that, that maybe uh, people with prior infections are not going to be as protected with this uh, uh, variant, so it's something that we still have to uh, be very uh, serious about. Um, but the fact that um, there hasn't been a huge amount of um, uh, new cases uh, with this variant over this past week is, I, I think, is a, is a very positive sign. And so uh, hopefully uh, this early indication will um, mean that it's not going to be as much of an um, uh, overall problem as we had initially feared, and that we can um, come to campus in, in January uh, in, a, in a way that, um, um, you know, students really want to experience our campus. Um, so with that, let me move on to a, a recent report from the uh, Standard & Poor's they released its global uh, ratings for the university, and it was a they affirmed our A plus long term rating and revised its outlook to stable from negative on all of Wayne State's outstanding bonds. It cited a number of strengths as the basis for its rating, including a comprehensive array of undergraduate, graduate, and professional programs, and improving demand metrics, solid fundraising capabilities and a manageable annual debt service burden. It also recognizes the challenges ahead, including the impact of the ongoing pandemic and modest available resources, among others. Uh, these ratings are a signal of the university's continued financial strength and how it is viewed in the marketplace by these agencies in particular. Um, I want to talk a little bit about research. We have some very positive news on the university research and development activity. Fiscal year 21 research awards and sponsored funding agreements totaled over $320 million, showing really outstanding growth. 
Uh, more specifically, federal funding in 2021 totaled $151 million. And the NIH, National Institutes of Health, led the sector, sector with over $100 million in grants and contracts. That represented a $9 million increase from 2020 and a 29% increase over the past eight years. Um, the $100 million is kind of one of these, uh, I don't know, thresholds, I guess, that, that it, you know, once you get beyond that, it, it seems to uh, accelerate um, uh, after that. You know, it's a, it's a threshold that a lot of universities try to reach and it's a uh, you know cause for celebration when uh, universities that are below this threshold are able to reach it and it bodes well for our continued uh, growth in this area uh, overall federal support for sponsored research and development programs at the university has uh, actually increased by more than 50 million dollars um, since uh, uh, fiscal year 13 and when you look at all uh, uh, research funding, it's it's more than double. Um, the substantial growth in the research and development programs touches upon major thematic initiatives in cancer, cardiometabolic health and disease, environmental health sciences, health equity, chemical sciences, bio and systems engineering, and neurosciences, so it's really pretty broad-based. The growth is driven by many factors, including faculty recruitment, strategic partnerships, focused research training programs and student research, cross-college, school, and cross-unit partnerships, enabling technology infrastructure, and the continued programmatic success of teams in place at the university across all schools and colleges and centers and institutes. Um, certainly, I want to um, um, acknowledge the accomplishments of um, uh, our faculty in all of our schools and colleges and our centers and institutes. I, I also want to give a special shout out though to our Vice President Lanier. Um, he, he was actually my very first uh, a senior hire and uh, he's uh, done an excellent job, I think, reorganizing uh, research here at Wayne State and really shepherding it to uh, where we are today. And, and, and I think the future bodes really well based on the uh, this report. Um, uh, moving on to um, uh, a tribute to Mort Harris. The Office of um, Education Outreach paid tribute to a dear friend and philanthropist, Mort Harris, during the Harris Literacy Program seventh annual practice based updates for literacy skill development and employment conference, which was held last month. Mr. Harris founded the program in 2012 to galvanize efforts that would make a substantial impact on adults in Detroit whose literacy levels are equivalent to the fourth to eighth grade reading level. With the underlying goal of workforce development, the program provides adult basic education to help members of the Detroit community reach their academic goals and make steps toward greater self-sufficiency. Um, We've been doing a lot of campus tours for elected officials. Our government relations teams has been working with my office on setting up these tours for elected officials, mainly to show the results of uh, state investments in public uh, higher education and what their dollars can do uh, in terms of leveraging good for the community. Um, Provost Cornblue joined me on several of these tours in October and November, where we hosted Representative Karen Wissett Senator Stephanie Chang, Lieutenant Governor Garland Gilchrist on walking tours with informative students um, as tour guides. Our, our new STEM Innovation Center, with, um, which several board members also recently toured, was one of the recent state investment projects highlighted on the tour. And then finally, just a few words about athletics. Um, uh, first, uh, many members of the board joined us on Friday, November 5th, when the university celebrated the grand opening of its new basketball arena in Fieldhouse. The game was uh, played in front of a sold out crowd against the nation's fifth ranked Division I basketball team, the University of Michigan. And uh, I think for at least, um, I don't know, maybe 25%, 30% of the game, we were actually pretty competitive. So uh, I was pleased about that. Uh, David Greer, who served as the head coach for our men's basketball team, 
uh, has retired, however, after 21 seasons as head coach. So on behalf of the board and the university, I want to extend our thanks to Coach Greer for his service to the university and to our students. Um, the volleyball team qualified for the NCAA tournament for the first time since 1994 and became NCAA tournament and began NCAA tournament play on December 2nd. Head coach Tim Koth was voted the conference coach of the year. And football graduate student Lane Potter received the GLIAC's Jack McAvoy Award, which is presented annually to a GLIAC football player who best combines outstanding character and leadership on the field, in the classroom, and in the community. Potter was also voted to the Cosita Academic All-District First Team. And then finally, two student athletes were selected to participate in the NCAA Leadership Forum. Laura Kazaku, who's a senior in women's tennis, and Paige Emile, senior in softball, as discussion moderators regarding leadership skills, refined understanding, um, personal values and core beliefs, and behavioral styles and support of peers. Uh, this concludes my report. Thank you. And then next, uh, I would invite uh, Governor Kelly for a report from uh, the chair of the board. Thank you, Thank Mr. You. President. Since the board met last, we completed our assessment, presidential assessment of, uh, of President Wilson. Uh, we reviewed his 2022 to 23 goals. Uh, basically, the assessment we made of him was very positive. Uh, we uh, basically approved his goals and we added some of our own. Um, meanwhile, we have our committees tend to meet uh, between board meetings and we did that. Our advisory committee chaired by uh, Governor Terry Lynn Land has met several times and been unusually busy. Uh, our health affairs committee uh, chaired by Governor Mark Gaffney has met and will be again soon. The audit subcommittee chaired by uh, Governor Dana Thompson has met and been active. Um, as you heard from the president, the board stem, uh, toured the STEM building. And after that, it met to, uh, uh, for an update on the status of the university's strategic plan, which is underway now. I might add that the board is giving unprecedented attention to the importance of the university's strategic plan. Um, in addition, the board met three times in all with Larry Ladd, an expert recommended by the uh, Association of Governing Boards. And the meetings were regarding the board's responsibility to set and just how the board should set long range financial goals. Uh, we met again today, almost for an hour in executive session, moving forward on this whole concept of the board's responsibility for setting long range goals, not just financial goals. And I will say that Brian Barnhill led the discussion. He's been he's been the catalytic agent in this uh, initiative, uh, and it's going to continue for for the future. Now, um, I think the board understands that these activities uh, are are being undertaken in the belief that a university's governing board has the responsibility to do more than provide oversight of the administration of the university, which occupies a great deal of our time. But our, our responsibility goes into setting the university's objectives and planning their implementation now and in the future. Uh, as the president mentioned to you, the standard and cores update has come out and our uh, rating has been raised from negative to positive. And I think it's interesting to note some of the specifics that the report mentions in the decision to raise that uh, action. Uh, the board, the the report says the outlook reflection, the outlook revision reflects the end of intra-board conflict that led to litigation in 2018 and 2019. It, management indicates that they do not expect any further issues that would disrupt the effective operation of the board. And further on, the report says. The Board of Governors is free from disputes demonstrated by the passing of the fiscal 2021 fiscal 2022 budgets, in addition to several other measures. And it adds, we would view further execution of the strategic plan as a positive factor. 
So I'm pleased to conclude my report on that note. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Uh, next, we have a special uh, a topic, and this um, uh, board meeting is going to be an update on the uh, strategic plan 2022. So I'd like to ask Michael Wright and uh, Mark Cornblue to um, update us on the work underway in the development of this next strategic plan. We're trying to get that done uh, by the uh, end of the year, hopefully. Uh, I know that everybody's been hard at work at it, and uh, certainly both um, Michael Wright and Mark Cornblue has been really at the center of this. So with that, uh, I believe that Michael's going to kick this off. Yes, thank you, President Wilson, and thank you, Board of Governors. I'm going to share my screen. I hope you can all see that. Shout out if you can't. Again. Okay, good. Um, we are nearing the conclusion of developing the five year strategic plan, and we thought it would be fitting and proper if we gave an update to the community on the process, um, the progress we have made so far, some of the focus areas, and, and next steps. I have the pleasure of, and Mark and I have the pleasure of representing uh, a pretty broad steering committee, which includes Governor Kelly, but also um, the, the co-chairs who are Mark, me, Laurie Claybo, and Steve Lanier, and a recent addition of David Masseron. And so we have a good balance of, of long Wayne State veterans, and I, I won't say rookies, but certainly people newer to Wayne State University who bring a fresh perspective. So let us begin. Uh, we're, we're not starting from scratch, which is a good thing. We've got some uh, distinctively Wayne State University, our five-year strategic plan that runs up to the end of this year. Uh, we've, we've made a lot of progress through that, so we're building on that. The, the campus has embraced over the five years of distinctively Wayne State, our mission, vision, values, it's, and, and the plan itself, and we've made a lot of progress on that. And, and it's heartening that most people, while they might not know the exact words, can certainly tell you what the mission of this university is. And that's one of the things that helps us get up in the morning and get to work because, or do it virtually, because it's an important mission. Issue, uh, mission. There are a lot of successes that we have shared with you in the strategic plan and the updates throughout the last few years. And there are also some things that we have learned and some shortcomings in the plan that we are going to build into the next plan. We will obviously continue to focus on the real heart of the university, the key academic areas and student success and teaching and learning. We began with board input and direction, which far more robust than distinctively Wayne State University, which has continued as Governor Kelly is on the steering committee. And we've also met with the board and we'll meet with them again within the next couple of weeks. And there's, there's building in of new information and learning over the past five years, particularly considering um, the fact that we are in this pandemic. Ah, that's what I was trying to. So the process that we have undergone, this began with a strategic plan retreat with the Board of Governors back in February of 2021. And then we began the, the process of gathering and analyzing input. We, we kicked this off with a town hall with the president and Governor Kelly, opened a web portal where we had hundreds of people provide uh, input we did key stakeholder interviews with key people in the university, board members, past board members, community leaders, key positions within the university and others. We did focus groups of students, faculty, staff, community, alumni, et cetera. Um, we had specific subcommittees that went into the focus areas, which I'll share in a minute, and brought some, some particular focus and expertise on those areas to be sure that that we were looking deeply into them. And we've had ongoing discussions with various centers of expertise, with the faculty, with the board, et cetera. And all of this is going into what we develop. Um, so we are drafting and refining right now, as, as the board is well aware. The next, the next phase is really once we have a completed plan to uh, for board approval and, and the, the communications launch, and then the cascading of the plan through the organization and development of supporting tactical plans. Mark, I just started talking. Feel free to, to chime in anytime you so, want. 
Michael, let me just add that in all those areas you listed above, the Academic Senate lead and especially its leadership has been deeply involved. So there have been faculty and academic staff on all the committees and all the interviews, and we've gotten guidance from um, you know, engagement and guidance from the Academic Senate and the uh, Policy Committee throughout the whole process. It's been a real partnership. Yeah, thanks. That's a great point. So the, the board in February affirmed the mission, which is right in front of you. We will create an advanced knowledge, prepare a diverse student body to thrive and positively impact local and global communities. And that was a great thing. This is our vision. And the board actually shaped this a little more by making it more global when it said meaningful engagement in the final line in its urban community and around the world. These are our values. And the board affirmed these two in February, but added one, the final value of leadership. We are proud of our long history as an anchor institution in Detroit and will continue to serve our community while playing a lead role in the city's resurgence. And I think this is a, a great addition, in particular because Detroit's a very popular place for universities these days, but it is our hometown. And we feel strongly about our, I guess, the fact that this is our territory. These are the five strategic focus areas that have been developed in the plan. And you'll note that they have a strong resemblance to those from the past because we still believe in the focus um, that we were on because it's so important to our missions. Research and discovery, teaching, learning, and student success, outreach and engagement, which will include the various engagement with the community uh, as well as the businesses, diversity, equity, and inclusion, and financial sustainability and operational excellence, which isn't always part of strategic plans, but we feel it is the key to going forward. And without it, uh, we will be hamstrung. Mark, did you want to add anything? No, oh, that sounds good, Michael. Okay. So I'm going to run through some key metrics and priorities that are now in the plan. There are some salient themes that have come out, um, but these are the things we're going to measure. Some of them are, are binary. We don't have it, and then we do. Some of them are about growth. But we want to grow enrollment. Um, we did not grow our overall enrollment through distinctively Wayne State University, but we've got plans in place to go at both undergraduate and graduate level to grow enrollment, um, it, which includes, importantly, those people that are in the state and beyond who have some education, some college education, but haven't been in the in the in a university for a while, we want to bring them back. We have some experience with doing that. We feel like we should be leaders in doing that. That's consistent with the governor's mission. And we think um, this could be a competitive advantage. We want to keep continue to grow our six-year graduation rate and a six-year graduation rate for underrepresented uh, uh, minorities. We want to increase the two-year graduation rate uh, for community college associate degree transfers to 60%, narrow the minority achievement gap, launch the next fundraising campaign, increase our endowment, advance the research expenditures, and we may have I've just done it based on uh, the president's report, uh, and that would be one we'd be happy to check off. Increase hiring of, of faculty of color, expand OMSI to include campus development of spaces to acknowledge, celebrate the wide diversity of races, cultures, creeds, and orientations at Wayne State. And specifically, uh, we're working on creating a black cultural center um, and we're looking to lay the foundation at Wayne State for a, a National Institutes of Health Center for Health Disparities. Uh, we hope to build a new school of medicine facility. And uh, we're talking about coordinating and optimizing business outreach and engagement. That has happened throughout the university, but we think that maybe there's, there's more to be done if we better coordinate uh, those activities. So the next steps, we're going to continue refining this plan through the month. We've got almost ready to go back to the board, a next draft, um, and then we'll be working on that through the end of the year. Board approval and adoption. If the board were to approve and adopt this, it would happen at the first meeting in, uh, or the, I believe the January 28th meeting, which is the first meeting in 2022 upon which we will launch this from a communication standpoint and begin cascading it through the organization. And at the same time, we'll be developing the supporting tactical plans at the school, college, and unit level, some of which planning is already going on, knowing that um, the focus areas are, are pretty well set. So with that, I will um, ask if there are any questions.
OK, thank you. I believe you're muted, President you're Wilson. Mute, you're muted, President Wilson. <laughs> I knew I was going to do that at least once. Um, <laughs> well, the next part of the agenda, unfortunately, um, was something that we wanted to do in person and we're not going to be able to do in person so we're postponing it till the january meeting and that was that we're going to distribute the plaques and certificates for the winners of the 2020 and 2021 faculty recognition awards uh, unfortunately as i said we won't be able to do that until we meet again in, in january but i want to thank the recipients for their continued patience uh, this is too special to do over uh, virtually, so appreciate your uh, patience. Um, we have some board committee reports. Uh, two of the board standing committees met this morning, the Budget and Finance Committee and the Academic Affairs Committee. I'd like to call on each of the chairs of those committees for reports. So first, uh, Budget and Finance, uh, Governor Barnhill. Thank you. The Budget and Finance Committee met this morning and we considered one action item and heard three informational reports from the administration. The action item, which was part of the consent agenda heard earlier today, discussed and approved some much needed structural repairs to the stadium and our athletics field. The informational report included a summary of the recent five-year capital outlay plan which covers the years 2023 to 2027. Um, it was submitted to the state of Michigan earlier this fall. Uh, the standard report summarizes progress on major capital projects. Um, and we also heard a report on the purchasing exceptions, which provides information to the committee on contracts that were issued without competitive bids. It was one of the committee's shorter meetings. Um, but we covered a lot of important materials nonetheless. Thank you, Mr. President. That concludes the report. Thank you. Next, the Academic Affairs Committee was chaired by Governor Gaffney. Governor Gaffney. Thank you very much. The Academic Affairs Committee met this morning. The first presentation was an update from one of the university's newest deans, Dean Brian Cummings of the Eugene Applebaum College of Pharmacy and health sciences. His presentation included the 11 programs that the college runs, serving almost a thousand students uh, by 100 faculty and 20 staff. The college has a healthy research portfolio and its students are placed in practice sites across Metro Detroit. Dean Cummings also talked about the community engagement act aspect of the college which has an impressive array of programs serving the community. The committee next took action on a series of recommendations, uh, all of which were included in the president's um, uh, consent agenda, but, uh, but I'll just touch on them here quickly. Discontinued three programs in the nurse uh, midwife uh, area of the College of Nursing, one discontinuance in the College of Education, and we revised the board statute on university requirements for the bachelor's degree, correcting an imbalance in the number of credits required for students to double major. So we made it easier for students uh, to double major. The last item on the agenda was a presentation by the university's art curator, Grace Sarah. She spoke about the significance of the university's impressive art collection. She discussed not only the art itself, but also how it is used to educate our students in the various colleges and departments. The impact that the art can have on each member of our university community and the importance of good stewardship, of course, of these works. Uh, the collection has more than 6,700 pieces with the value of over $10 million. Uh, that concludes my report, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, next, we'll have recommendations and reports from the university administration. As I call on the individual VPs, I would invite uh, each to either provide a highlight from your report or to update your report. So first is academic affairs report from Provost Cornblue. Thank you, President Wilson. So I provided the board with a written report from various colleges and divisions. I'd like to highlight two additional items to, in the public meeting here. Um, 
first of all, yesterday we announced the pathway to faculty program in order to build faculty diversity on the campus. This will fund five to six postdocs per year uh, with the guarantee that these postdocs will be able to move into faculty positions if they meet clear metrics. So um, this is set up to work closely with the school, schools and departments. Schools and departments will put in proposals uh, of why they, of the, in important areas where they want to build diversity in their faculty and show their commitment to uh, supporting a diverse faculty. And a university committee will choose which, which departments will search each year for these uh, postdoc fellowships. Um, this shows our commitment to fulfilling the promise of the Social Justice Action Committee. Um, I want to thank uh, Dean Amanda Brian Friedrich, and, uh, who's Dean of the Graduate School, and Boris Baltus, who's Associate Provost, for working out the details for this. I think there's great excitement across the whole campus uh, for this, and the goal is that this will be um, if not a permanent program, at least one that will be with us for five to 10 years and really will help reshape the faculty over time. Um, and then finally, I, I really want to thank uh, the faculty, the staff and the students for a semester that went incredibly well and particularly trying times. I mean, if you think about the challenges we had this semester, um, we and, and yet all you know, everything went smoothly. All our classes came off. We had our faculty and students com and staff com complied with masking, complied with the vaccine mandate. Students have been glad to be back on campus. We had a record number of student activities. We've had the, uh, record low numbers of uh, academic dishonesty reports. Um, you know, I think if anything, the uh, semester showed how much our students value the education we provide on campus and how dedicated our faculty and staff are to helping our students. So just a, a vote of thanks and thanks to the Board of Governors for supporting us through these trying times. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next is research report, Vice President Lanier. Thank you, President Wilson. I have two items that were included in your materials, item C and item, item B and item C. Item B uh, summarizes uh, selected highlights uh, in the research contribution area that we pulled out that I think if you scroll through it, you'll see the diversity of strengths from uh, being recognized as intellectual leaders uh, in, in a couple of fields to I think significant funded programs that connect with our role uh, in the city of Detroit. But I'd like to just touch upon the last item, which involves success of a young invest, a new investigator, Samuel Zilioli. Uh, it's a new NIH research study to investigate psychosocial determinants of cardiovascular disease risk among urban African American adults. And simply the title itself captures the value of integrated approaches across our theme from health equity to cardiovascular disease to behavioral health uh, that cuts across the spectrum. But one thing that I did want to mention in the second paragraph is the fact that this fellow is report is this individual is appointed as a joint appointment in the Department of Psychology a strength of behavioral sciences, and 50% appointment in the Division of Behavioral Health in the Department of Family Medicine and Public Health Sciences. So he cuts across two interesting sectors, and um, I would submit that the fact that he had this connectivity was key to his success with his funding program. And I think it relates a little bit to the idea of the dual, the, the mechanisms we put in place to facilitate a dual degree uh, that was touched upon in the Academic Affairs Committee and summarized just a few minutes ago by Governor Gaffney. Because I think a lot of these kids and a lot of the young faculty coming on want to have multiple touch points and, and cut across multiple disciplines. Uh, and so I just wanted to mention that uh, relative to the connectivity for uh, the point that we discussed this morning in Academic Affairs Committee. Item C is the research report that summarizes the uh, 
uh, research funding to the university for this year over, you know, over the last several years. I think it's on a good path. I, I have nothing to add to what President Wilson had uh, summarized uh, in his report a few minutes ago. Thank you, President Wilson. Thank you. Um, let me see. I think we you also have a report on waivers approved to board statute 2.4101140. Is that right? Yes, I believe that's for information purposes. Okay, very good. We'll move on then. Uh, next is an action item. It's a university subcontract, and I need a motion that the Board of Governors authorizes the president or his designee to contract with Society for Public Health Education to process evaluation of the Society for Public Health Education, CDC 2021 Institute for Higher Education Academy. Ma'am, please get a motion. Motion Governor by Pesuito. Governor Pesuito and seconded by. Support. Thank you. Governor Sancato. Great. Um, all in favor, please signify with aye. I'm sorry, this is a roll call vote. Oh, sorry, roll call. Governor Barnhill? Yes. Governor Pesuito? Yes. Governor Gaffney? Yes. Governor Kelly? Yes. Governor Kumar? Yes. Governor Land? Yes. Governor Stancato? Yes. And Governor Thompson? Yes. The motion carries. Okay, we'll move on then to government and, government and community affairs report by Vice President Lindsay. Uh, thank you, President and uh, members of the board. Uh, the report will stand as given. Uh, the only thing I'll highlight actually out of that report is the, the uh, upcoming 2022 uh, tribute that we annually have for the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King uh, Jr. Uh, we are hoping that it may still be in person, but and at a smaller scale, but uh, whether or not it's in person, uh, it will take place uh, if it has to be virtual. Uh, but I also want to highlight that uh, we, we are turning to one of Wayne State's very own, uh, Christopher Wilson, who is Director of Experience Design and African American History Program at the National Museum of American History at the Smithsonian. Uh, he is actually the 2021 Distinguished Alumni for Wayne State and will serve as our keynote uh, speaker. Uh, we also have other entertainment uh, and, and celebratory activities uh, for that day. And you'll get uh, more information on it soon, but just thought I would uh, highlight that. Uh, and uh, just to follow up on what the president said, we will be looking to engage uh, additional uh, elected officials on campus for various uh, tours uh, in uh, 2022 uh, for very specific purposes as well as in general. So uh, we appreciate those of you uh, who uh, support those activities. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Economic Development Report, Vice President Stabler. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the only thing I would add is a little bit of news that was embargoed until uh, yesterday uh, that I want to share with you that it uh, TechTown was named one of Crane's uh, best managed nonprofits for 2021. And uh, uh, we were really proud of, uh, of that because uh, we have we have worked very hard to get there. Some of you uh, like Lou Lessam will remember that six, seven, eight years ago, we had a group called the Support Group that met once a week to make sure the lights stayed on at Tech Town. Uh, so we've come a we've come a long way to uh, getting named one of the best managed nonprofits. And uh, Governor Sancato, I'm, I'm I'm also proud to say that one of the other uh, other finalists this year was New Detroit. Um, so we were very pleased to be in that company and uh, know that uh, you had a a hand in in that work as well. So just wanted to make sure I shared that with the group. Congratulations. Yeah, congratulations. Uh, okay, um, development and alumni affairs report, Vice President Burns. Uh, you're muted. I'm so happy to be able to say that. <laughs> oh, 
Uh, we almost got through the whole meeting without it, sorry. Um, I'm really pleased to be able to report that our Giving Tuesday results are up by 35% over last year. So we're feeling this is a great indicator for our year end fundraising results. Obviously, this is a really busy time of year for my division, um, with everything from annual giving year end appeals to significant major giving appeals that are happening right now and will continue through the end of the month. Um, I'm feeling really confident that our first quarter of the fiscal year is going to end um, very strong. So um, shifting over to alumni affairs, I'd like to bring attention to our Synergy event series, which is one of our newest alumni relations programs. The last installment of the calendar year end was held in November. Um, the Synergy series features academic leadership along with alumni experts for conversations on areas of strength for Wayne State University. Earlier this fall, you may recall that we held an installment of this series about the convergence of medicine and technology. The most recent installment was about social entrepreneurship and was moderated by Dean Cheryl Kubiak. And the first Synergy Series event in 2022 will be in early spring and will feature alumni experts discussing business investments for minority owned businesses. So we're really pleased with this new series and we think it's having a great result. Uh, that concludes my report. Thank you. Uh, the next item is uh, actually an action item and it's um, establishment of endowment uh, funds. And so I need a motion that the Board of Governors establish endowment funds that total $6,270,000 for the purposes presented as in your board book. Uh, and this one is a, a regular uh, vote. So can I get a motion, please? So moved. Right. It was motioned by sound like Governor Thompson, Governor Thompson. and supported by Governor Basuito. Uh, all in favor signify by yay. Yay. Yeah. Any any nays? Okay, the yays have it. Thank you very much. And um, the next is actually yours also, Vice President Burns. It's a, a naming of the School of Social Work Garden and it's an action. I would need a motion that the Board of Governor authorizes the honorific naming of the School of Social Work Garden as the School of Social Work Marianne Mahaffey Memorial Garden in recognition of Mahaffey's service to Wayne State University as a faculty member in the School of Social Work and her legacy of service to the community as a social worker, author, educator, civil rights activist, volunteer, and political leader. May I have I'd a motion? Like to move. So moved. So moved. Mr. Uh, President. Oh, okay. Marilyn. Uh, I'll yeah. second. I'll second. Thank okay. you. I, yeah. I I appreciate that. I it was it's uh, I I knew Marianne and it's with great pride that I'm able to make that motion to name our school of social work garden after her. Um, I think this action helps seal in our book of memory her extraordinary work with the Detroit Common Council, her tireless work as a civil rights activist, and her inspirational work as a faculty member of our School of Social Work. Ditto. <laughs> okay, great. Well, we, we have a proper motion in a, in a second. If there are no other comments, if I could, um, all those in, in support, uh, please signify by yay. Yay. Okay. And are there any nays? Okay, that's uh, unanimous. Uh, thank you very much. And then the next is a, um, a ratification of an electronic vote that was taken earlier. Um, it, it's just a motion that the Board of Governors ratify the action adopted by the Board of Governors by electronic vote on October 28th uh, with a vote of 8 0, and it was just naming of the plaza at the uh, basketball arena. Now, may I have a motion? So moved. And support? Governor Buzuito supported, I believe. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Mr. President, I think we we probably agreed to 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 do that naming because we were so impressed with that wonderful award you just received from the National Medical Fellowships, your Excellence in Education Award. I think all the board members know that you got that for your 
longstanding commitment to leadership and for your efforts in developing a strategy to improve the pipelines of underrepresented students trained in the biomedical sciences. So congratulations on that too. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, appreciate it. Um, so I think uh, we can move on then to uh, public comment. Uh, we've now reached the point uh, of the public comment section of the agenda. Uh, the sector has received three requests from members of the community to address the board. These individuals will be joining the board in audio format. Each speaker will have three minutes to present their statements and will receive a one minute warning from the secretary to let them know that their time is almost up. President uh, Wilson, could I um, interject for a moment? Yes. We don't appear to have any of the speakers with us. Uh, we've been reaching out for the last half hour, but have not. Um, I don't believe any of them are online. If anyone is, um, I don't see them. And so we can reach out to these individuals and invite them back in January if they had technical difficulties, but they've not responded by email or by phone. Okay. We're getting the meeting. Well, if uh, if any of the three, Justin Sherman, Maureen Kemp, or James Gallant is out there, now's your time. And if uh, not, then the meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. Thanks, everybody.